Now that we understand how we ventilate or breathe, let's look at some of the lung volumes that we can do when breathing and then the respiratory rates. So this slide shows us the different lung volumes and the next slide I'll flip to includes a description of those volumes. So you want to flip back and forth and look at those to get familiar with them. Now when you look at these volumes there's only two numbers I want you to know. That is going to be the tidal volume here and the vital capacity. So tidal volume basically is how much air you breathe um, in a normal breath, both inhalation or exhalation. So about every time you inhale, you inhale about 500 mils of air. And then when you exhale, you inhale or exhale about 500 mils of air. Now, if I inhale normally and then really <gasps> suck it in, that amount that I inhale above what I normally inhale is called inspiratory reserve volume. If I normally exhale and then really exhale hard and exhale everything I can, that amount I exhale after a normal exhalation is going to be expiratory reserve volume. Now even when I completely exhale as much as I possibly can and get out every little bit of air I possibly can. I still have air in my lungs and that's the residual volume. And now these other values are simply adding up these values. So for example, inspiratory capacity is tidal volume and inspiratory reserve volume added together. Functional residual capacity is expiratory reserve volume and residual volume put together. And then vital capacity is going to be basically expiratory reserve volume, tidal volume, and inspiratory reserve volume together. And then total lung capacity is vital capacity plus the residual volume. So what I want you to be able to do with these values is to be able to say if I give you a couple of the different um, lung volumes that you aren't expected to know, you'll need to calculate another lung volume. So in other words, simple one is if I say the vital capacity is 4,800, which is one of the values you have to know anyway. And you have to know volume. Well, if I said, let's say a patient's expiratory reserve volume is 1,200 mils, what would be its inspiratory reserve volume? Well, I do subtract the tidal volume and expiratory reserve volume off of vital capacity, and you have an inspiratory reserve volume. That's a very simple one. Um, might get a little trickier. So the best plan of attack for this is going to be to basically be able to make this chart. And then if you can make the chart, then you can really look and see how are you going to get to the unknown lung volume. Other lung volumes include the anatomical dead space. This is the volume of air that goes to the conducting zones. That is just the air from that only makes it through the nose and then down through to the um, terminal bronchioles. So that air never actually enters any of the respiratory passageways in the respiratory zone, so it's not involved in gas exchange. So that's about 150 mils. Alveolar dead space is the volume in the, uh, in the alveoli that don't work. So basically this is the amount of the alveoli that's, that are non-functional or that don't work anymore, probably because of disease or collapse, scar tissue, uh, mucus, whatever. So it can fluctuate. So there's not going to be any value to that because it's going to be dependent on how much exposure you've had to pollutants. Maybe you're a smoker, lung cancer, do you have emphysema, those types of things where you have a limited number of alveoli. So you have bad alveoli, so to speak. Then total anatomical, or excuse me, total dead space is the adding anatomical dead space and the alveolar dead space together. Respiratory rates basically a respiratory rate is how many breaths you take per minute. So you can see children breathe a little less per minute than, or excuse me, adults breathe a little bit less than children do. Respiratory minute volumes or respiratory ventilation rate is going to be basically how much air do you pump out every minute or push out or exhale or inhale, however you want to look at it, uh, per minute. So think of it kind of as an analog to cardiac output where F is the respiratory rate, how many breaths you take per minute, and vital, or tidal volume is the amount of air you inhale with each breath. So basically you're inhaling six liters of air per minute. 
Alveolar ventilation is another important look at how well you're actually getting air to the alveoli. So this is looks very similar to the um, respiratory minute volume, but we have to subtract off that anatomical dead space. So basically, this is how much total air you get to your alveoli per minute. Um, so we just take vital uh, tidal volume and subtract off the dead space and then multiply that times the number of breaths per minute. Now why this is important, if you look down here, we compare these breathing rates. Here's a person, kind of the typical normal rate and depth. Here's someone who's breathing slower but has a much deeper breath. And here's someone with shallow breathing, breathing higher rate. All of them have the same minute ventilation, but if you look at their alveolar ventilation, that is the actual air that's getting to the alveoli, you can see that the person that's breathing slow and deep is actually getting better or in higher amount of air per minute to those alveoli than either of the other ones. So slow, deep breathing is always good. That's going to end then our look at these tidal volumes and respiratory rates. So the next thing we'll start looking at is gas exchange.